for the first time, Rwanda registered two COVID-19 deaths in a single day, even as the government announced the temporary closure of two major markets in the capital, Kigali, due to a spike in the number of confirmed cases. Earlier, we spoke to Anik Ishimwe, a medical equipment engineer at the Rwanda Biomedical Center for an outlook of the pandemic in the country. Uh, when lockdown is lifted, we observe very high vigilance. Compliance with the preventive measures was high. Everyone was wearing their masks. Frequent hand washing was happening. You could see everyone using sanitizer. And you could really feel the personal and institutional responsibility. Everyone was just very invested in keeping themselves and each other safe. However, now we notice a bit of relaxation in how people comply with the measures. There's a kind of fatigue that has set in, not just here, but worldwide. Here in Kigali, we've been, we've been well, in Rwanda, we've been dealing with the pandemic since March. And I can understand that people feel like it's been a long time of living somewhat restrictively. But it is as important to respect the measures now as it was when we had 10 to 20 cases. It's actually more important now. And we'd like to see that relaxation go away. It is as important to wear your mask properly, frequently washing your hands and avoiding crowded, crowded spaces and physically distancing whenever possible. Right, we've recently seen some spikes in the numbers of confirmed cases. Is this the main reason why? Uh, I think I'll answer twofold. First of all, we see a spike because we started with a test capacity of about 300 uh, tests a day. Now we've cumulatively tested 300,000 and we test between four and 5,000 samples a day. The more you test, the more cases you'll find. However, as the Ministry of Health explained, the recent spike, um, we've observed a lot of cases in markets. Markets are places that tend to be crowded, have a lot of people, and when the preventive measures aren't enforced in settings like that, then you get a spike of cases. Right. You know, we've seen um, in the media African healthcare systems generally being referred to as a bit weaker than the rest of the world. A lot of the um, aid that's been coming in has been enabled uh, in order to strengthen those systems to deal with the rising COVID-19 numbers. So far, um, how has Rwanda's healthcare system managed to cope um, in terms of capacity, equipment, medical staff, um, and, and things of that nature? I think all health systems in the world have been tested by COVID. The pressure is immense to not only respond to the pandemic, but also to ensure continuity of services. It's not, not an ideal situation where all your efforts go into responding to a current pandemic and then the people don't have access to the healthcare that they normally have access to. But we've been preparing. We prepared for this pandemic. We had surveillance at points of entry as far back as January. Our medical teams were trained. Hospitals and health facilities developed preparedness plans. They knew what they were going to do if a case got here. We mobilized, we were able to identify these are the resources we're going to need and mobilize them. Also, this isn't the first health crisis we've dealt with as a country, and our teams were able to leverage the experience that they already had. And we were able to scale that so that we are able to respond as we respond now. Uh, we continue to build up our healthcare system so that it becomes even more resilient than it is now. And that is something that is continuous and we will continue doing even after this pandemic. Right. As more research is being conducted and we learn more about this virus, there are new studies uh, suggesting different things, one of them being that COVID-19 could be airborne. Um, what will this mean in terms of response? We learn new things about this virus almost daily. Uh, what we know for sure is that it's transmitted through respiratory droplets and touching surfaces that might have come in contact with a positive case. There are studies that show that it could potentially be airborne. However, the preventive measures that we've communicated before still apply. If the virus is airborne, you still need to wear your mask correctly. You still need to make sure you're in well-ventilated places. You still need to frequently wash your hands. We will, the measures 
would apply if it was confirmed that that was a method of transmission anyway. And that's why we encourage people to still follow the guidelines and the guidance that we've provided to the public. Right. If that is the case, you know, we have seen all different types of masks on the market. We're seeing plain cloth masks, different types of materials. What would be the best type for us to invest in? The Ministry of Health and the Rwanda FDA have released really extensive and comprehensive guidelines on their platforms regarding what constitutes an adequate face mask, which is a proper barrier to respiratory droplets, which, as I've mentioned before, is a method of transmission. Those guidelines are readily available, and we do encourage people to seek them out if they want to have more information on what that is. But even more than what kind of mask is adequate, one thing that we really want to emphasize is properly wearing the mask or an over you know, both your nose and mouth. It just isn't going to help you if you wear it under your nose, if you wear it under your chin. Even those masks that we've already established to be the right kind of masks won't be helpful in that case. We really want to emphasize the proper wearing of masks that, as I've mentioned, are defined in the Rwanda FDA. Right. Um, uh, just before I let you go, you know, the RBC has expressed confidence that Rwanda would be among the first countries on the continent to come up with a vaccine. Um, what's the progress in this regard? RBC is closely following vaccine research worldwide. However, we are not currently in vaccine development. Research, innovation, and knowledge sharing have been at the forefront of our COVID response and the healthcare system in general. We've seen some innovation in how we test and use of technology to respond to this vaccine. However, we are not currently doing vaccine development. We have seen some promising candidates all over the world, and we continue to follow any breakthroughs at the moment.